Greetings in the name of the risen Christ. Thank you for joining us for this Easter morning service and thank you also to all of you who joined us throughout this Holy Week for the various videos that we drop throughout the week. Christos Anesti, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. If you would, let us know that you're with us this morning by hitting the like button or saying a quick word of hello on the comment section below on either YouTube or Facebook. It's wonderful to have you with us today. Two quick announcements. We're going to have two Zoom meetings this week. On Tuesday night at 8 p.m., Samantha, our Children and Family Director, is going to be hosting a Zoom meeting for parents. It's just a quick parent check-in, and that's at 8 p.m., Look out for that link in your uh, email box. And also on Wednesday night this week, in place of our uh, typical Wednesday night potluck, we're gonna be having a church check-in and that's at 6 p.m. and I'll be sending out a Zoom invitation for that. We're glad that you're ha here with us in worship this morning. May your hearts be blessed. send your risen life to come and live within our hearts again. Where there are shadows, cast them away. Where there is doubt, let it be overtaken in your joy. And where there is death, raise us to new life. We pray it all in the name of your risen Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
The scripture reading for this morning comes from Matthew chapter 28 and verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Happy Easter, church. Christ is risen. Resurrection life has triumphed over the grave. The stone has been rolled away, and he is not here because he has been raised. Have you adapted yet? You see, one of the reasons that we pay close attention to the story through Holy Week and walk with Jesus step by step beginning on Palm Sunday is because those events remind us acutely of the realities of a pre-Easter world, a world in which Christ had not yet been raised. It is an intense, heartbreaking, anger and sadness inducing experience to go back and walk through that world during Holy Week. It is a world in which a young woman pouring out her heart in worship, anointing her Lord's feet with the most costly perfume, a lavish expenditure, a beautiful gesture of love can be despised and misconstrued and derided as being wasteful. It is a world in which a longtime confidant can just sacrifice a deep friendship like that for just a bag full of coins. And where the knowledge and the hurt of that kind of betrayal can deal its own kind of internal agonies. It's a world in which even the closest of friends would deny that they even know who you are right in your greatest hour of need and in your greatest isolation. This is a world in which the constraining effects of fear over what is coming reveal how truly confining and death-dealing these sorts of heart conditions can be to our soul. It's a world in which the physical wounds and the emotional wounds seem to bleed together somehow, and where the growing suspicion that this might be all there is to life haunts every progressive step along the path. This is that pre-Easter world that we refamiliarize ourselves with on Holy Week, a world without a resurrection. The truth of the matter, though, is that far too many people out there today don't need another tour through that pre-Easter world because that is the world that they are still living in today. The world as if Easter had never happened. The world as if life had never triumphed over the grave. The glorious mystery and truth of this day's celebration is that Christ has been raised. Where, O oh death, is your victory? The life of God in Christ 
has triumphed over the grave. But until that Easter morning miracle moves out beyond the confines of history and from the realm of external observation and critical evaluation and takes hold in here, it hasn't done the work for which it was intended. It hasn't raised the hearts of the broken along with Jesus. It's not a reality that we have adapted to yet. The facts about ourselves and about our lives that we recall through the experience of walking with Jesus through Holy Week is that it's possible to be a living, breathing, well-functioning organism on the outside. All of those biological systems inside of us can be running just fine. They can be beating and humming and sustaining life just like they're supposed to. And even if all of that is working just perfectly, it's still possible for death to be reigning in the heart. That's what I've been talking about in my last sermon series over the past month and a half, the way fear and hatred and resentment, all of these different kinds of heart conditions can stifle and snuff out life. But Christ is risen and calls us all to share in that resurrection life. What would it be to not only share in his resurrection life in our flesh and in our bones, but in our hearts, where Easter's power for living today really makes its impact. Has your heart adapted to Easter's reality yet? I love the way Matthew's gospel tells the story of the way things shook out in that first Easter morning. The way Matthew tells it, the rolling away of the stone blocking the entry to the tomb is more of a, of a spectacle for the onlookers' sake than anything else. The soldiers were already there, and the two Marys had already arrived at the tomb when suddenly the ground starts to shake and the stone door rolls open so that all who were gathered there could witness together in this fantastic display that this tomb was empty. It's a majestic and awe-inspiring event. For the guards and for the Marys, it was a fear-inspiring event. To see the fearsome angel sitting there on top of the stone. But what Matthew seems to want us to see most in the way that he recalls these events is the way that these two Marys, these two first onlookers, adapt in their hearts to Easter's new reality. At first it was fear and disbelief. They didn't know what it was that they were looking at or what they were supposed to, to take away from this scene. The angel announces what has happened, but they still needed to go inside and tour the empty tomb maybe to experience and to feel the reality of its emptiness. They had just seen the stone rolled away with their own two eyes, remember. How can this place be empty when we saw him placed here just two short days ago? All they had had at this point was an announcement and this puzzling experience. But by the time... They left the tomb. Their initial fear was beginning to be transformed into fear and great joy. It says here in verse 8. But then when they met him on the road, on their way back to tell the disciples, we hear nothing of their words. It only says that they took hold of his feet and worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. You see, what we are being allowed to witness here is an Easter morning adaptation of the heart to a new resurrection reality. They began at fear. 
and then left the empty tomb with fear and with great joy. And when they met the risen Christ for themselves, they simply worshipped at his feet with feelings that words can't contain. And he settled all of their fear. Do not be afraid. Here is a picture of how Easter's joy and Easter's miracle not only overcomes the physical, biological deaths that creatures experience, but also the deaths of the heart on the inside of us that choke out all the life. Joy has overcome the fear. Life has overcome the death because he is not here. He has been raised. You know, the holy weeks that we've all lived through, the Maundy Thursday betrayals and disappointments, the Good Friday sufferings and hardships can bring out the very worst in us. We're living through a season right now that's revealing just how much Easter morning adapting there is yet to be done in our world. When a massive outbreak of sickness leads to a massive outbreak of fear. And the fear is stifling and the fear is paralyzing. And all of a sudden, many throw aside our better instincts to share and to help each other get along in such difficult times and instead buy up and hoard the resources so that some have in abundance while others go without. Some have even taken, taken advantage and tried to, to sell their hoarded resources for profit, capitalizing on the deep brokenness of these times. These times have reminded us that our lives are entanglements of interlocking systems, a public health crisis, and an economic crisis, and a spiritual crisis of fear, and a moral crisis of hoarding resources all go hand in hand with each other. But here's the truth. One day the vaccines will come to take care of the health crisis. The stimulus check will come soon to help out with the economic crisis. But where will your spiritual stimulus check? Come from? What will it require to make your heart truly alive with the joy and the life that Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, experienced when they came face to face with resurrection life on that first Easter morning? Where will you find the life that leads you past and beyond the confining fear and on from there to joy? And on from there to hearts overflowing to worship at the feet of the one who takes hold of you for new life from the inside out. Mary and Mary were adapting to a new Easter world that morning. We get to watch as their hearts are shifting from a pre-Easter world into one where death does not have the final word. We watch as this new post-Easter resurrection life begins its real work, taking hold in them from the inside out. You see, Easter isn't just about something we believe, some empty confession that we heartlessly affirm as part of a creed. It's about so, so much more than that. It goes so far beyond that. It's, it's about the possibility that the risen Christ's life might take hold in you, and you adapting to that new reality in your hearts, in your lives, in how you live, in how you love. He is risen. Have you adapted yet? Amen. One day when heaven was 
filled with his praises one day when sin was as black as could be jesus came forth to be born of a virgin dwelt among men my example is he the word became flesh and the light shined among us his glory like it's going to get pretty messy. Maybe I shouldn't do it. Thank goodness it's empty for the most part. That's good news and not something that I was expecting. It's very surprising. 
there, in our scripture today, there was also a surprising event of something being empty. We read, or we heard Pastor John read about Mary Magdalene and Mary going to the tomb uh, where Jesus was buried after he died. And when they got there, they were met by an angel telling them that Jesus had risen. Now, to, to show it, the angel moved the stone and said, See, he's not here. He is risen. And y'all, this is great news. This is good news. Um, and they even run into Jesus in, the, in this story. Um, and he tells us to go and tell other people. Why is this good news? Why is the tomb being empty good news? Well, it's because it shows that death doesn't win. That grief and uh, sadness and pain is not the end of Jesus' story or God's story or even our story. That there's hope. That there's life uh, and something to hold on to. So what does the scripture mean for us today? Today is a different time. We're in a different pandemic. Maybe we're, I mean, I know I felt more feelings of being scared or sad during this time, but something that we can hold on to is that that is not our final feelings, that there is hope and that Jesus is alive and working and God is working through us and through this world. So let's pray. Dear God, how awesome that there is such good news that you've defeated death, that you've defeated, defeated sadness and grief and pain. Help us this week to see the ways you shine through hard times with hope and with uh, joy. And all this I pray. Amen.
Inside Mumsy Family. I'm Janet Hromjack, and I currently am a member of the Staff Parish Relations Committee. I've also served on the Finance Committee, and Claire Holson and I recently chaired the Capital Campaign, which we had last year. I love this church, and I especially love the way that everyone bands together. I love how welcoming we are to people and how everyone is always willing to help out everyone else. This is a challenging time for many people, as well as for many institutions out there. And we wanna thank you for your continued support of this wonderful church home that we all share together. Because we are all trying to stay a bit closer to home these days, we're going to have to give it our best effort to stay together virtually and to find creative ways to stay connected until we can all come together again in person. In that spirit, I want to encourage you, if you haven't already, to start to give to the church through the PushPay app, which you can access both through our church website and on our Mumsy Church app. It's very simple. I can attest to that because we use it. We have a recurring contribution set up and it's very simple to use. To set it up, you just follow the short instructions that are provided once you click on PushPay. It's safe, very secure, and it's a simple way of giving. Once it's all set up, it's as easy as entering an amount and hitting next or you can choose to do the recurring gift automatically as we currently do. However you give, we want to say thank you very much and remind you that this church is so much more than just a property and a building. It's our life together and our mission, both here in this place and across, across the nation and even the world. In the meantime, stay safe, hold each other in your prayers, and let's do all our best to help out where we can and keep on being the church together. Let us join together now in our prayers for the people. God of life and light. God of transforming power. Send in us today the power of your resurrection life to take hold in our hearts on this Easter Sunday. Lord, we pray this morning for all of those living in the despair of a pre-Easter world. May they be found in you and in, your, and in your indwelling life. May they find joy and restoration. Wonderful God, we lift up our world this morning, this world that you came to suffer and to rise for. Lord, we pray that this world might be changed and renewed in your love, restored in your glorious image. Lord, we give you thanks today for the many graces that we sometimes take for granted as part of our everyday lives. We, we thank you, O oh Lord, for the beauty of this world. We thank you for our loved ones and for a place to come together and find true fellowship and deep friendship together. Lord, we lift up all of the many ways that you are at work around us today and we pray especially for for our world and for its leaders as they lead us in making decisions that affect all of our lives together and lord today especially we remember that all of these boundaries between nations don't keep us apart from one another because we are one human race made in your image Lord, we lift up those who suffer this morning, for those who go without. Lord, we also lift up our country in this time. Help, it, help us to keep our divisions from, from getting in the way of our ability to work together and to make wise decisions. Lord, we lift up our global church. We pray for its leaders. We pray most especially for our mission and our witness. Give us servant hearts, O oh God. Give us humble hearts, the hearts of peace and hearts of service. Lord, we lift up this morning the members of this church. We pray that you would keep us safe and preserve us from the time of trial. Lord, we pray and lift up our, our hospital workers teachers, our parents, all of the emergency workers, all who are working hard to help us adapt to these new conditions, O oh Lord. 
Lord, we also name the prayer requests that we hold before our church community this morning. We lift up Moxie and Dan, and Jonathan, and Ryan, and Seema, and Ellie and Lily. We pray for Carl, and for Chris's sister, and for June, and for all of the many prayer requests that we hold in our hearts this morning out there in the webosphere and in our hearts that stay unspoken. And we pray all of these things in the name of the one who has taught us to pray in this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power, and the kingdom, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hear the holy roar of God breathes down. Watch the water is part before us now. Come and see what he has done for us. Tell the world of his great love and our God is the God who saves. Our God is the God who the God of the the God of the our God reigns now and forever, He reigns now and forever. His enemies will run for sure. The church will stand, she will endure. He holds the keys of life, our Lord. Death has no sting, no final word. And our God is a God who saves. Our God is a God who saves. The God of God arise, our God reigns now and forever, he reigns now and forever, let God arise, let God arise, our God reigns now and forever, he reigns now and forever. Sunday morning. And now may the love of God and the grace of his son Jesus Christ and the fellowship of God's Holy Spirit be with you and abide with you this day and forevermore.